Hey guys, today I wanted to answer some of your art questions. In the background is a pastel piece I created using one of my own photos that I took when I went to the Blue Mountains in New South Wales here in Australia. I am Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. If you have any questions that didn't get answered in this video, leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them in future videos. The first question is, how do you know when your piece is finished? Basically, it depends on how much detail you want your finished piece to have. For example, my pet portrait commissions, I usually do a bit more detail than in my own wildlife pieces because most of those small details like fur markings or color shifts can make the drawing look more like that exact pet. But when I'm doing wildlife pieces, it doesn't matter if the patterns on the animal are slightly off because the viewer won't see the artwork and the reference side by side. Lately, I've been stepping back more often and looking at my artwork from a normal viewing distance, and if I can't see the detail that I'm adding, then I stop putting in more detail. Deciding when a painting or drawing is finished really depends on the style that you're after, but a good tip is to take a photo on your phone when you think that you're done and look at it every now and then throughout the day or through the week. If something stands out to you that you want to change, then do that. Otherwise, if you still like it, then call it finished. I used to be such a perfectionist when it comes to the details of my artwork that I would continue spending weeks on the same piece, just adding more details or changing things slightly. But the amount of time that I was spending on these details didn't make it look much better than it did beforehand. Most of the time, I couldn't even see the details that I was adding from a few steps back. So I've been trying to tell myself that done is better than perfect. And I've discovered that having some of those brush strokes or pencil strokes show through on purpose creates a more interesting and painterly piece and allows more of your own personal style to show through. And this way, I can create more artwork in a shorter amount of time, which is more beneficial to me as an artist because I have more paintings for sale, and I also have more time to create tutorials for you guys. Second question is, should you tell a client how many hours it takes to complete a piece? I usually tell people that I don't keep track of the hours because I'm working on numerous projects at a time, so I completed it over a few weeks or months. And I actually do keep track though because it gives me a better idea of what to charge for my work in the future, but I just don't tell people that. People are usually trying to work out how much you get paid per hour when they ask this question, but it doesn't really work like that as an artist. I've spent my entire life building up these skills. Just like someone who went to university to become a doctor or a lawyer, I didn't automatically have the skills to create this kind of artwork. I had to teach myself over many, many years of trial and error. And I still do a lot of research and planning each piece and setting up camera equipment to film or take DSLR photos of the final piece to use for prints. And not to mention the hours spent on uploading to social media, updating my website, creating these free YouTube videos, spending time replying back to emails for potential commissions, marketing my artwork, replying to comments on social media and showing my artwork in galleries and the prep that comes with that, packing and cleaning my workstation between different mediums, varnishing paintings and a lot more. So the amount of time that goes into physically creating the piece doesn't include all of the hours behind the scenes and the many years that it took me to learn how to get to this point. And the general public don't usually understand that. If another artist asks me how long it takes to create, I usually give them an estimate because they're asking for a different reason than someone who isn't an artist and is just looking at the price, trying to work out what my hourly pay rate would be. I just told them that I'm not sure because I work on numerous works at the same time, but I completed it over a few weeks or months. Question number three is, how do you know which colors to use in your artwork? And this comes with a lot of practice, but a good way to choose your colors when you're just starting out is by importing your reference photo into Photoshop or an editing program that has an eyedropper tool. And you can use the eyedropper to pick out colors from your reference, and then you can make swatches or match your pencils or mix your paints to match those colors. And once you've done this a few times, you'll start to see the colors a bit easier without using this tool. Over time, you'll start to add in colors that you know work well, even if they aren't in the original photo. Like I like to add blues and purples into black or white areas or add magentas into orange areas, but it'll all come with practice. Number four is what are light fast ratings and why are they important? The light fast rating on art suppliers relates to how fast the pigment will fade when exposed to light. 
So there are two scales that most companies use, which is the ASTM or the Blue Wall Scale. And I only use colours that are at the higher end of these scales, which means that they will last many years in museum conditions. And the reason that these ratings are important is because the artwork will potentially fade if you don't use suppliers that have good light fast ratings. Some brands say that their products are light fast, but they won't give you the test results. And brands that actually have done these tests with these two scales will proudly display those ratings on their pencils or on their paint tubes or their packaging or brochures or on their website. And these suppliers come with a price to match. This is why there is a huge difference in student grade and professional grade prices because the, the pigments that they use in student grade aren't as high quality and can affect the light fastness of a product. Artist quality suppliers usually have higher quality pigment that costs more and therefore co companies have to charge more. If you want to sell your artwork at decent prices, then you'll want to use light fast and archival materials. And if you're doing art as a hobby and you don't plan on selling it, then you can use cheaper supplies if you like. Question number five is how do I know which way is the right way? One artist or teacher says to do it this way, but another says it's wrong. So basically there are no rules to art. For me, my goal is to sell fine art at decent prices, which won't fade or yellow over time and will be of the highest quality that I can manage. So my opinion is from that perspective. If you're doing art for craft reasons or you don't plan on selling your work or it's just for a hobby or for yourself, then you don't really need to worry about the right or wrong thing. But in general, if you want to sell your work, make sure that you're using light fast and archival materials and please make sure that they're intended for art. Some people use baby oil or hairspray on their coloured pencil pieces, but these things are not archival, they're not made for artwork, and they could potentially cause problems later down the track. When it comes to the actual technique, there's no right or wrong way to do it, as long as what you're doing is archival. I usually mix different techniques I've picked up with in my research or by watching tutorials, and I'll use the techniques that I like the best or that will give me the results that I'm after. If you start mixing mediums together, you'll want to do a bit of research on whether they're compatible. A lot of artists use gel pens or acrylic paint on top of coloured pencil work. And although the materials might be archival separately, when you put a water-based medium like acrylic on top of an oil or wax-based medium like coloured pencil, it will most likely crack or peel off over time. You can mix water-based and oil-based mediums, but make sure that you put your water-based medium down first and then oil, not the other way around. And I recommend doing a bit of research first if you plan on mixing your mediums. Again, these answers are based on fine art and not illustrations. For example, if you are an illustrator and you're going to convert your drawings into a digital medium for prints or social media or videos, then you can use whatever you like because you're not planning on selling the original drawing. Number six is, do you need to have natural talent to be an artist? The short answer is no. You can learn everything that you need to know to become an artist. Art is a skill and the people that seem naturally talented at it have probably been interested in art since they could hold a pencil. I spent my entire childhood drawing in my spare time because I loved to do it and I was interested in learning and improving. Because of the time I'd already put into it, during primary school and high school, I was better than most of my peers at art. And this wasn't because of talent. This is because I spent my entire life drawing and learning how to improve in my spare time. If you want to learn how to draw or paint, you absolutely can. And you can be just as good as any artist that you admire if you work hard enough. Some people may find it easier to see the different colours or shapes and it may come quicker to them. But if you're interested in art and you want to do it, then do it. There are so many free resources out there to help you improve your artwork and learn new techniques. You just need to put in the time to practice. I've got a playlist on the screen that I thought you might enjoy, so click on that and I'll see you over there. If you have any questions that you'd like answered in future videos, then leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them in the future.